गुड मॉर्निंग सर the i think there is some audio issue or everything is fine all good uh, good morning sir i am audible good morning ishab yeah 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 you are audible yes yeah. <clears throat> i uh, vijay can we start pankaj bhai kada chawan aaye sahib jo baat ho rahi thi was busy somewhere but he would be joining live from there समीर भाई चालू करिए या शो फाइन सो द पैटर्न इज दैट ऑफ अ सर्जिकल एग्जामिनेशन एज अ लॉन्ग केस ऑफ सी एब्रेस्ट वी हैव इन आर पैनल ऑनको सर्जन डॉक्टर डीजी विजय डॉक्टर होलिकल फ्रॉम तिरुपति वी हैव ऑनको मेडिकल एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर भावेश पारे फ्रॉम शेलवी ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल एंड Uh, we have doc- we will be joined by dr kinjal jani he is also a, he is a radio a radio therapist for uh, i think hc group of hospitals uh, on the expert panels and on teaching side we have dr samir shah sir he is a professor and head at uh, bhavna government medical college bhavnagar dr shefali desai breast surgeon at uh, samvet hospital and dr uh, anuga zope again a breast surgeon working at the apollo group of hospitals in amdavad uh so what we are planning is we'll allow the student to complete his history part followed by examination part and followed by whatever you want to ask after history part we'll grill him for the history and after the examination part of for the examination and the overall discussion uh we would like to cover all the aspects of ca breast including surgery radiotherapy and of chemotherapy rishav start Uh, good morning, respected faculty, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting. I he, hope he is he is audible to everybody. Yeah, he is. Yes, yeah, so please. I'm start. presenting a case on carcinoma breast. Uh, I'm third year resident at BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. Uh, a 58 year old post menopausal lady, also make her back patient. Uh, lower middle socio economic class, residing at Odav, Gujarat. Presented with chief complaint of lump in her left breast for last four months. Uh, history of presenting illness. Patient was apparently asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic four months back. Uh, then she noticed lump in her left breast, but it is in onset, rapidly progressing from initial size of approx three into three centimeter to current size of approx eight into eight centimeter. She also noticed retraction of nipple for last two months. There were no any complaint of pain over the lump, ulceration of nipple, or nipple discharge, and uh, no history of loss of appetite or significant weight loss. There were no history of fever or trauma to the breast, no history of other lump in opposite breast or axilla, uh, no history of breathlessness or cough, no history of abdominal pain or jaundice, no history of headache, vomiting or seizure, and no history of any bony pain. Uh, patient is known case of diabetic mellitus type two and hypertensive for last six months and taking regular medication for the same, and she is also uh, having history of tubal ligation twenty eight year back. Then menstrual and obstetric history. Her age at minority is 20 years and has three children and no history of abortion. All children were adequately breastfed for up to two years and age at first childbirth uh, was 23 years and last childbirth was 28 years ago. Following which she underwent tubal ligation. She is menopause for last 12 years and uh, previously her menstrual cycles were regular. Uh, she is not. Uh, she is. Uh, she does not have any history of use of oral contraceptive pills or hormone replacement therapy. Uh, on personal history, she is vegetarian diet, having undisturbed sleep, and there is no any loss of appetite. Uh, her bowel and diarrhea habits are normal, and no addiction history of alcohol or smoking, and there is no any allergic history to any drugs. And family history, there is no any history of similar illness, no any history of breast, gastrointestinal, uh, ovarian, and prostate malignancy in first degree or any second degree relatives. Uh, okay, stop, stop. Yes, stop. Stop at the history part. Samir, bhai, go to the first slide. Rishav, go to the first slide. Yes. Sir, we'll ask uh, he questions regarding history, and then we'll go for the examination part. Okay, Rishav. Yes, sir. Uh, I would be starting with the very common things which we will be asking in exam to each and every student. 
can you say something about what is the importance of age in this patient 58 years you have mentioned 58 years female is yes, age is a major risk factor in the carcinoma breast uh, from 40 years onward patient having increased uh, risk of carcinoma breast anything else uh, if, uh, if if the patient is younger age group and patient is having symptoms of carcinoma breast then we can think about uh, uh, patient is having some genetic or hereditary ca uh, carcinoma or uh, if uh, middle age or young age patient uh, we will think of uh, uh, some uh, benign cause uh, uh, no, i am i am typically going on the 58 years yes Means what do, what does it come in the mind of a surgeon when you are been examining a patient who comes to you a 58 years female with a breast lump and you are been thinking from your history part from history part only not examination that it may may be malignancy or it can be a benign uh sir in this age group i will think of malignancy first if uh, patient come with uh, symptoms of nice does from your history part does anything strongly points that it is a malignant tumor uh sir uh, in history he is giving history of uh, rapid progression of uh, uh, lump and uh, she is also having recent onset of retractions which are the which are the breast lump that would be rapidly progress do you see a 58 years in a 58 years a malignant tumor would be rapidly progressing because the size that you have mentioned is 3 by 3 cm and after 3 months the size goes to 8 by 8 cm it is more than double double the size yes yeah so which type of breast malignancy would you suspect at the age of 58 years would could be severely progressing in this uh, rapidly progressing uh, inflammatory breast carcinoma sir or okay. uh, Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. If you have been saying inflammatory breast carcinoma, inflammatory breast carcinoma is seen in which age group of patients? Then, see, it's a round, round, round. There is something. See, basically, as a student, see, this is nothing like personal, but this is as a student. When you have been putting down a history, all the slots should be in an appropriate place. That rapidly progressing. If you have not spoken now. Uh, you are uh, at ease yes uh, because see inflammatory breast carcinoma occurs in which age group it is commonly occurring in younger age group when pregnancy is there yes or so then it would be a rapidly progressing yes. at 58 years post menopausal woman saying a rapidly progressing then what what would be, what would you think except malignancy that would be rapidly progressing what does rapidly progress in a breast uh, uh sir if there is uh, any untreated uh, uh, abscess okay now so you, so you jumped from a malignancy to a benign <laughs> cause <laughs> uh rishab this is what happens in exams sorry that see this is like... what is happening see it is going round and round you won't be finding a way out here uh sir uh in uh, in vijib ductal carcinoma there are several uh, several variety like uh, uh, metaplastic uh, type will having rapid progression sir. see the rapid progressing see basically the thing is that in a post menopausal woman such a rapidly progressing tumors don't we don't come across most of the so, time they are all premenopausal hormonal dependent tumors that are rapidly progressing and so it is better see if you want to speak a rapidly progressing then think that it is a inflammatory carcinoma don't or it is a sarcoma yes simple cfi yeah sure yeah please uh, please, please, please interrupt here so that we go ahead faster yeah what definitely sir, definitely madam please what sir is actually trying to tell you uh, rishav is that uh, rapidly progressing is a very subjective uh, you know history so you need to be very careful as to what you decide to you the words you decide to word, uh, use that is exactly what sir is telling you i would call rapidly progressing what was not there yesterday and came tomorrow today okay but something which has progressed over 4 months is that rapidly increasing something which has increased over 8 uh, months is that rapidly increasing so what uh, whenever you use adjectives be very careful 
as to whether you are justifying the use of that adjective what sir is trying to guide you to is exactly that look at where those words are going to lead you in your history your history will lead you to questions and your history will lead you to where the examiner is going to take you for a ride okay so that is exactly what sir is trying to tell you is you have the complete history i don't i am hearing the first time you have the history you have the examination you have everything so evaluate that and then write down what you are trying to tell us right and as far as your patient details are concerned everything else is good but remember this is a breast cancer patient and you know that i don't know that so here along with uh, the menopausal status it will do good if you mention the gravida status of the patient just because this is a uh, breast cancer patient and you know about it right yes. i think that is exactly what sir has been trying to tell you that using words which will uh, which are subjective should be avoided and you should uh, you know you, only if you had said it was a tumor which progressed from Uh, at uh, you know when she noticed the centimeters to a eight centimeter size now then probably your discussion would have gone uh, somewhere else rather than directly jumping into uh, inflammatory breast cancer. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Rishabh, uh, I have some more question. Uh, most of the time, it's a practical question. How do you decide about postmenopausal status of uh, women? It's a practical question. What is the uh, yeah? Tell me. हेलो यस 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 रिशा हाँ यू पोस्ट मोनोमल स्टेटस ऑफ़ ह्यूमन पर्टिकुलरली समबडी हैज अंडरगोन सर्जरी समथिंग एंड सो हाउ डू यू डेटर सर फॉर नोइंग द पोस्ट मेनोपोजल स्टेटस वी विल गो फॉर ओवेडन फॉलिकल काउंट एंड एसएसएच लेवल ऑफ द पेशेंट सर Yeah, that's correct. In a hysterectomy, is patient agree? But otherwise, what is the definition of postmenopausal status? Uh, sir, uh, uh, if the patient is uh, uh, having cessation of menopause for the con continuous twelve months, uh, if the patient is not taking any chemotherapy or any ovarian suppression drug, uh, or the patient is uh, uh, otherwise patient is more than sixty year of age and having a, a menopause or having bilateral salting go for ectomy, history of bilateral salting go, and we'll talk. Yeah, yeah. These things should be specifically known because the patient says I am not uh, menstruating. That doesn't mean it's a postmenopausal status, and this is important from the management perspective. Later, we will come to that. Yeah. So, what about the feeding uh, history, Rishab? Uh, I think I uh, didn't see the feeding, the breast feeding history, and what is the significance of that in a, a case of breast malignancy? Ma'am, he has frequently breastfed all all three children for up to two years. And uh, breastfeeding uh, decreases the cycle of uh, decreases the menstrual cycle. Uh, that uh, decreases the risk of uh, getting breast cancer. Yeah. Come again. What did you say? Uh, when breastfeeding uh, during breastfeeding uh, lactation period, there will be a uh, uh, absent menstrual cycle, and uh, the total menstrual cycle will be less. So patient will having. Uh, Let's risk to get breast cancer. No. No. Can you can you explain in a more scientific way? So what happens when somebody is lactating? What happens to their cycles? What happens to the hormonal of this thing? Can you correlate with that? No. Basically, when they are lactating, what happens? What happens to the hormone, which is the risk factor for breast cancer? What? Uh, estrogen about? hormone. What exactly happens? Uh, so during uh, lactation, uh, uh, the patient will be amenorrheic. Uh, yes, so the total, but what uh, does how does amenorrhea reduce the risk of yeah. breast cancer? Uh, when there will be less uh, estrogen exposure uh, to this patient. What does estrogen cause that leads to breast cancer risk? That is uh -huh. what sir is asking. What is the basic mechanism? Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, it will act on the peripheral uh, uh, fat cells which present in breast, and that will lead to the uh, uh, a hyperplasia or. No. What is the connection between peripheral fat cells and the breast cancer? Breast cancer arises from what?
on what does the estrogen act on which cells of the breast tissue mam there are uh, estrogen receptor uh, present over the breast cells uh, and, you, uh, and the tubular uh, tubular cells on which this uh, estrogen act mam and there will be proliferation of tubular cells Okay. Another aspect is you something about family history. Can you go to that slide? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. When you mean uh, family history, as already you have covered, I think you said uh, it's more important in younger uh, females. But can you uh, name some specific syndromes in breast? Uh, sir, Peyton uh, syndrome, Cowden, Cowden syndrome, sir. And uh, Lee from any syndrome. Uh, name the commoner. Then. Name the commoner syndromes first. What's the Cowden syndrome? Most common is BRCA associated, so hereditary breast and yes, ovarian sir. cancer syndrome. Okay. Yes. Which is BRCA associated, which is about eighty percent of all syndromes. Yes, sir. Other all syndromes are, you know, less common. Yes. Okay, Rishab, so going to your history. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue. Sir, I wanted to say just BRCA one and BRCA two issue. No, and what is the risk of cancer? Of breast and ovary so they are associated with breast and ovarian cancer syndromes they are the most common ones yeah yes sir. and you specifically you should ask their history in first degree relatives as well as second degree relatives also yes yeah. okay rishab can you go to your uh, history odp yes Okay. Further. Next slide. No, no, not past history. Go back one slide. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, say something about nipple retraction? Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, in breast malignancy, there will be recent onset uh, nipple retraction, which will circumference. But in case of uh, like uh, duct atresia, there will be slit-like retraction. Uh, what is the what reason, reason for nipple retraction? Sorry, sir. What is the reason? What is the mechanism? Nipple retraction. Uh, sir, uh, when the uh, tumor cell uh, get uh, infiltrated into the uh, lactif uh, lactiferous uh, duct, that will be uh, that will be causing pulling of the nipple and uh, retraction of nipples. Lactiferous duct. If you want to I mean, uh, is it a benign, benign nipple retraction or malignant retraction? What are the points you have to consult it on? Uh, sir, in benign type, there will be uh, a long history of nipple retraction, or there will uh, not be uh, circumferential. There will be slit-like retractions, but in malignancy, there will be a recent history of retraction or uh, uh, circumferential retraction. Yeah, one is history. I mean, duration of retraction. Second thing is it unilateral, bilateral? Is it associated with any lump? Yes. So all these things will make you to rule out between the two things. Okay. Rishi, over here, I would like to point out one thing. When you are giving your history, please group your history uh, properly. So first, you give us the, of course, the ODP, and then you concentrate on the history related to the breast lump itself. what you know your progression and your regression any associated symptoms then come in detail to the associated history breast related any other breast findings and then come to the etiology uh, history and then in the last the general history don't mix up like you know you uh, go to one and, and then go to other don't do that give it in uh, bunches so that we in our the examiner in his mind can form a picture it should come as a flow chart right Okay, Rishab. In your history, you have said about the lump and retraction of the nipple. 
anything else you would like because from your odp the examiner is going to ask you a question okay after your odp okay what what do you think it is and if you jump on it is a sea abreast then you are in trouble sir i like examiner would say okay you are knowing the case before the exam only uh sir i'll ask for uh, nipple discharge or any ulceration sir and uh, any other lump if there is a uh, associated nipple discharge then uh, it is most probably sir with the blood stain discharge then it will more lead towards the malignancy or sir any swelling over the axilla or neck region sir come i kedo na samir bhai so what are the i mean after going through the history and all what are the things you are thinking and why what are we keeping in mind differential diagnosis uh, uh sir in this age group uh, this age group uh, i'll keep uh, uh, for a malignancy and apart from that uh, like mastitis uh like granulomatous granulomatous mastitis or less common cause like traumatic uh, necrosis or hematoma no, no without any history of trauma and all i mean i don't know how right. you would know sir please uh, sorry sir can i bishop you have said that your uh, tumor has been increasing the lump has been increasing will a fat necrosis and a hematoma continue to increase on its own over so many months no ma'am so then should that be in your differential diagnosis what is a more likely differential diagnosis other than a malignant tumor of the breast um, uh, mastitis uh, in this is uh, 58 like, year old what mastitis 58 year old painless yeah painless what ma'am is trying to say would you consider phyloids as yes. one of the possibilities yes and phyloids so that is a very important uh, differential diagnosis so remember what dr dg vijay just told you talk about the common things first remember when you are asked uh, to take a differential diagnosis remember what you see in your practice or your opd most and answer accordingly okay yes. okay next Okay, Rishabh, in your history starting line, you said the patient is from a low socio-economic status. Why did you take that history? Does it help uh, you anywhere? No, sir. Usually, uh, breast carcinoma is seen in uh, higher socio-economic group. Doctor, uh, D G V J S, can you help us out? Vijay, Hello. yeah, yeah, I am here only. I think the social, <laughs> the the breast cancer is more common in the higher socio-economic status. The lifestyle makes a very important contribution to the risk factors of breast cancer, and that is the main reason why we ask for the low, lower whether was socio-economic status. The other reason could be, uh, you know, on a lighter note, that the patient is not going to be able to afford some of the expensive. therapies that are available in breast cancer <laughs> but i think uh, uh socio economic status poor this thing some of the risk factors are less and higher socio economic risk factors are more i think we can so urbanization move ahead with the examination would be a better approach yes 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 let us move ahead with the physical examination and then the right. and the treatment yeah <laughs> right so, uh, right Right. a very short yes, sentence ma'am. before we move ahead with the physical examination some of the questions which we asked him and he didn't answer for the benefit of the uh, other pgs so madam had asked how does uh, breast uh, breastfeeding affect so two most common mechanisms where breastfeeding is concerned with though they are not proven but postulated is one the regular uh, proliferation cyclical proliferation that is associated with ovulatory cycles is stopped during your pregnancy and 
uh, early part of lactation so that is one of the features and the other one which you should remember but not necessarily go in detail is something called as a hamlet that is a human milk associated lactoalbumin which causes specific apoptosis of your ductal carcinoma cells and that is what is postulated to reduce the risk of breast cancer when you are breastfeeding uh, yes yeah. we can go ahead now with the exam uh -huh. great anga if you can just drop in the uh, this on the chat box yeah i will hamlet yeah thank you rishav go ahead with the examination part uh, i have examined the patient after taking informed consent in adequate light and exposure in presence of female medical attendant a uh, patient was conscious cooperative and well oriented with time place and person uh, her weight uh, uh, was 85 kg and bmi was 33.6 kg per meter square and uh, her pulse was 88 per minute normal volume and bb was 136 by 84 mm of hg in left upper arm in supine position she does not have any pallor ictus cyanosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or dependent edema uh, on inspection i have been uh, Inspection was done in following four positions: uh, sitting position with arms by the side, arms raised above the head, and bending forward position. Uh, upon inspecting uh, with arms by the side, right breast and axilla appears normal, and the left breast look asymmetrical. With and uh, both breast and NAC appears at the same level. Uh, left breast uh, there is fullness seen in the upper inner and upper outer quadrant, and uh, there is body orange appear body orange appearance of skin present over the lung. and there is no any puckering of skin there is no any uh, ulcer scar or overlying skin changes no any engorged vein uh, the left nipple areola complex having circumferential nipple retraction present on the left side and areola appears smaller uh, than the right side and there is no any nipple discharge bilaterally no any cra cracks fissure uh, ulcer or eczema over areola and no any visible swelling in axilla or supraclavicular fossa arms thorax and neck Uh, were normal on raising both arms above the head uh, left breast moves upward than the right breast and left nipple areola complex displaced upward and inward and nipple appears retracted prominently uh, with the bending forward both breast fall equally and nipple retraction become more prominent uh, upon palpation i i have palpated the patient in uh, uh, semi recumbent and recumbent position uh, pal right breast and axilla Uh, were normal on palpation and uh, on left side it, there were no any tenderness or local rise of temperature a single lump of size 8 into 5 cm palpable involving the nipple areola complex mainly upper inner quadrant and slightly extending into upper outer and lower inner quadrant of left breast on the surface uh, were bosselated uh, ill defined margin and hard in consistency there is no any discharge from nipple and lump is fixed to the overlying skin and breast tissue but free from the underlying muscle uh, and chest wall like pectoralis major and serratus anterior muscle this is the lump uh, this is the examination of uh, uh, this is the fixity to pectoralis major muscle that i have examined first uh, i i have asked the patient to put her hand uh, over the hip lightly and then uh, we will try to move the lump in the direction of fibers of pectoralis major uh, and perpendicular to it and then again uh, we have asked the patient to uh, tout uh, to tightly press over the hips and uh, try and check for the tautness of the muscle and then we'll again put the mobility of lump uh, in the same direction like uh, along the fibers and perpendicular to it and uh, lump is uh, uh, lump were fixed to the skin and on lymph nodal examination uh, upon examining axillary lymph node pectoral groups were not palpable brachial group subscapular group central group or apical group uh, there were no palpable uh, group of lymph node and supraclavicular group uh, of lymph node were not palpable this is the pectoral group of lymph node that i have examined uh, i have asked the patient uh, to abduct her uh, shoulder and then i have insinuated my uh, finger uh, along the posterior border of uh, anterior axillary fold and then uh, from the thumb i have uh, placed the uh, uh, pectoralis major 
uh, backward and uh, try to feel the lymph node with pulp of my finger. Uh, this is a brachial group of lymph node that I have examined on the upper uh, surface of uh, head of uh, upper on the upper end of humerus. And I have examined the central group uh, over the chest wall, and then I have insinuated uh, toward the apex of the axilla uh, for examining a apical group of lymph node. And for the subscapular group, I have examined the patient from the behind. Uh, for the left side, I have used my uh, left hand uh, to examine over the uh, anterior surface of posterior axillary fold. Uh, on systemic examination, uh, there were uh, normal vesicular breath sound on respiratory system examination, and there were any no added sound. CVS examination were normal. Uh, CNS examination, patient was alert and conscious, no focal deficit. On per abdominal examination, uh, abdomen was soft, non-tender. There were no any palpable lump or any organomic alley. And on the spinal examination, there were no any bony tenderness. Uh, her per vaginal and per rectal examination was uh, uh, normal. This is summary you of the did a pervaginal examination? Uh, to rule out mammary uh, pelvic mass. You did it? Uh, yes. You did a pervaginal examination for this patient? Yes or no? Uh, yes, and for the completion, I have examined the patient. In the exam, if you say you have done PV examination and the examiner asks the patient, have, has your PV examination been done or not? <laughs> or your PR examination being done or not, the viva will end there. Yes. So if you have not done it, don't say it. Just say that I would like to uh, do a pervaginal or a perrectal examination for whatever reasons. Okay? Yes. What reasons? Sorry? Why would you like to oh. do a pervaginal or a perrectal examination? Uh, uh, Ma'am, to rule out uh, if there is any pelvic mass is there. To look like for a pelvic mass. Tubo ovarian mass. A tubo ovarian mass. Yes. Is the tubo ovarian mass going to be palpable for vaginal or for rectal or something else? By Padabra Rusha, Rusha and also I can... Uh, Rusha, Madam wants to ask you, she has been directing you in per rectal examination. Don't stick on per. See, she is speaking per vaginal and per rectal examination. You answered the question of per rectal examination where you would be able to answer. What do you palpate in a case of advanced CA breast in per rectal examination? Uh, toward the anterior uh, uh, anterior surface of uh, rectum, I would feel for uh, uh, rectal vaginal pouch. What it is called? What do you palpate means? What it is said? A medical terminology very commonly in MBBS and MS level. Everybody wants to hear that. So, Risha, other than the regular uh, observations and examinations that I would do in my per and per vaginal examination, because I'm suspecting this to be a breast malignancy, I will look for uh, a tubo ovarian mass on a per examination if but, and uh, uh, any mass in the uh, cul-de-sac, okay? Because you have to specifically know you are talking, you are leading me towards a breast malignancy diagnosis, right? Yes. Okay. Carry on. Uh, this is a case of 53 year old postmenopausal lady with data 3, uh, with zero abortion and 3 living ch uh, live children with painless, uh, rapidly progressing left breast lump for the last 4 months and recent onset retraction of nipple. On examination, uh, there is 8 into 5 centimeter non tender uh, hard lump involving mainly upper inner quadrant and extending into upper outer and lower inner quadrant and uh, nipple areola, areola complex of left breast, which is fixed to his skin and breast tissue, but not fixed with chest wall with body orange appearance of his skin and circumferential nipple retraction. And there were no any palpable group of axillary lymph nodes. Uh, so my diagnosis is left sided locally advanced breast malignancy with no evidence of clinical metastasis. Uh, her TNM staging is uh, C, T4, B, N0, M0 uh, with a stage 3B. Uh, did you examine musculoskeletal system? 
uh, I've examined the spine cells. He said. Yeah, you should look for long, long bones, like the femur, I mean, uh, femoral and humerus, uh, long and bones. Particularly if they have symptoms, of course, but you should look for some tenderness there. These are the most common areas of metastasis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Arisha, start with the first slide yes. of examination part. Samir, sir. Yeah, another thing we are interested from the treatment perspective, it may not be important for you, but performance status also we will assess. But anyway, that is a difference. There are two scales are there performance case scale and EC, which is case. Yes. May not be required for you, but just go through if you are interested. Yes. Uh, sir, her ECG is, ECOG is four by one. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. So, her BMI 33, is it obese, normal body weight, high? Uh, obese. Obese. Okay. And how is obesity important for breast cancer? Uh, sir, in obesity, there will be increased peripheral conversion of uh, estradiol to estrogens. Estrogen. Okay. So, there will be uh, increased chances of breast carcinoma. This is a... Are all for... obese patients at a risk of getting a high, uh, increasing their risk of breast cancer? Or is there a particular segment of obese? Post-menopausal post obese. Post obese. obese. But all post-menopausal obese patients, or will you look for a particular um, subset where there is a high likelihood that it may, uh, you know, they may have an increase of risk of breast cancer? You are looking at BMI. Would you also look at something else? Weight, height, BMI, pulse, and BP. Is there anything else you would look at? Uh, other than this? I will go for waste, uh, waste uh, heat ratio. Why? What will that tell you? Uh, you are on the right Central track. obesity, ma'am. Because, uh, so uh, without going further, this is where you are looking for or are trying to identify obese patients with probable metabolic syndrome. And these are the patients who are at a much higher risk. And these are the patients where you should uh, immediately try to implement some risk reductions. Okay, so your waist, uh, waist hip ratio and some uh, blood parameters, they will contribute to that knowledge. Okay. Yes. Can we move ahead? Yes. In this photograph, Vishab, I can see that the left shoulder is drooping. Uh, Have this you noticed that? Uh, Ma'am, actually, this was due to position of the patient. So has it affected your inspection finding? It yes, has. It can affect me. Yes. It already has. If the yes. shoulder was at the right position, your neck was definitely not at the same level as the opposite breast. Yes. So that brings me to the next question. What is the difference in the neck level that is considered significant? You told me neck is present at the same level. The same level mean they have to be exactly at the same line, or is there a difference which is significant? Uh, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. Uh, 2.5 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters of a difference between the two NAC. Anything beyond that is considered to be significant. Okay. Can you uh, the elaborate on body storage? What is it? What is the mechanism? Uh, so, due to blockage of uh, lymphatic channel, there will be edema and uh, at the hair follicle, there will not, uh, 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 the rest of the breast uh, skin will be edematous uh, apart from the uh, area where there is hair follicle. So it will look like the uh, orange piece. So what are the other skin changes and how does it affect staging? Uh, sir, uh, if there is any satellite nodule ulceration uh, or if there is any uh, inflammatory breast carcinoma like uh, edema, tenderness, or warmth. Uh, so uh, this will change my uh, uh, TNM staging. Like uh, if there will be inflammatory breast carcinoma, that will, uh, that will be T4D. And if there is ulceration or satellite, satellite nodule or body orange, that will be T4B, sir. Suppose some skin dimpling is there. Uh, so skin it will not be included uh, in the uh, T4B category, sir. Skin dimpling or tethering. So, what is the mechanism for dimpling? Uh, sir, there will be infiltration of the Cooper's ligament. Uh, 
uh, which is attached from the superficial fascia covering the pectoralis major muscle to the dermis of the skin. Uh, so there will be uh, uh, puckering of the skin, dimpling of. Yes, yeah, skin dimpling of not affect staging. Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, so at this point, Rishav, I would like to point out you have already informed us on inspection that there is podi orange. You have uh, in this presentation you have shown us pictures. In your actual presentation, the patient would be sitting in front of you and the examiner. And in your demonstration, you have shown us a demonstration of podi orange at the end of your video. So when there is visible podi orange, you don't need to elicit it on palpation. It's not very comfortable for the patient. Eliciting uh, podi orange or eliciting skin fixicity is one of the most uncomfortable, uh, you know, uh, examinations for a patient of any breast lump. So if you have visible podi orange, there's no need for you to demonstrate it. Okay. okay. Yes. So two points. Uh, I, I think uh, Rishav on inspection also. If you see your picture, it is seen that the uh, nipple is retracted and at a elevated level, though the shoulder is drooping. So that you should have mentioned, and uh, uh, you did not mention anything about the uh, left upper limb also uh, about any if there is any edema present or uh, uh, not. Is there is there any significance of that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, having uh, examined, ma'am. I have told that arms were normal. There will no any edema. Uh, if there will be uh, actually lymph node infiltration, so there will be lymph chances of lymph edema of the upper limb. Correct. Okay. Next. Move ahead. But the examiner so, should tell the candidate that he has done a fantastic job till now. Examiners, please go ahead. Another <laughs> at least say that. No. I have already told him he has done an excellent job. Yeah, I'm just waiting for him to finish his master. Photographs are very good. Video is very good. Good presentation till now. Go ahead. Yes. Good presentation you know, and uh, has been well demonstrated. You are absolutely right, uh, B. Compliment. Well Bija, only one also. thing. No, no. One yeah. thing. One thing. Please grill him before you appreciate. Please. Yeah. <laughs> So we have got four people. <laughs> I have got my friend Dr. Narendra all the way from Tirupati. Yeah, Dr. Holly. Yeah, yeah. I'm really grateful uh, taking active uh, participation. Please, sir. So he is a professor of surgical oncology at Tirupati, uh, Sri Venkateshwara Medical College. Very dear friend. Very active in MCH uh, examination, and he will certainly gr grill the candidate now that the treatment and other investigation will start. <laughs> Go ahead, so Richard, Richard, yeah. don't, go ahead. don't don't yeah. get misled by DG complimenting you. He's just preparing you for what lies ahead. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Ravi, you are saying something. Ravi, you are saying something. Yeah, I was just uh, I was just asking Richard that uh, it's all okay. You want to still stay focused. There's uh, Angamim rightly put that you know <laughs> it, it it still is a long way. So that's all I wanted okay. to tell. Thank you. I'm good. Some of you, anything on your part? No, everything is fine. Okay, continue. 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 Shefali, ma'am, Anga, anything on examination side or uh, should we uh, go over? We should go ahead. Go ahead, please. Treatment. Yeah, right. Because uh, looking at the brace itself doesn't give. Um, uh, when yeah, just one question. Yes. Suppose, no, he suppose, demonstrated yes, everything very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one question. Yes, suppose yes, lump is yes, fixed sir. to pectoralis muscle. Suppose it's fixed to you elicit that sign and there is a fixity. Yes, so sir. how does it affect staging? Uh, sir, uh, it will not uh, affect staging because the chest wall involvement. Uh, uh, if there is involvement of ribs, intercostal or serratus anterior. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's often the mistake people do. Yeah, it, it does not affect. As per AJCC, I mean, pretty easy. Uh, so this is the mammograph okay. of the patient. No, no. We, what do you want to do next? So you have, you have you got any differential diagnosis? Are you are hundred uh, percent sure that it is a, a carcinoma of the breast? Uh, sir, with this history and examination, uh, uh, I'm sure that patient will be having malignancy, sir. Malignancy? Why it is not sarcoma? You are sure. Parents? Uh, uh, sarcoma, uh, not, for that matter, malignant phyllites or something. Why it's not because there are no nodes. 
mam it can be sarcoma uh, so i'll go for further investigation but uh, in this case uh, that malignancy the patient is having malignancy uh, that i'm sure and no, that we are not, we are not contesting the malignancy word but we are uh, we want to know whether what you were thinking why i mean there are different malignancies are there no yes so sir i could not get with get your question so possibilities of malignancy which are the different kinds of malignancies that can arise in the breast that is what sir is trying to ask vishu uh, so uh, first is invasive ductal or invasive uh, lobular carcinoma apart from that there can be uh, sarcoma or uh, uh, lymphoma uh, that can be uh, manifestation of local uh, breast lymphoma or can be manifestation of systemic cause uh, vishava sarcomas and lymphomas more common in the breast or ductal carcinoma in situ is more common in the breast ma'am ductal carcinoma in situ is more okay sir so, risha would you like to put a differential diagnosis or you are you are confirming the okay by no i i had my provisional diagnosis is this uh, sir my provisional diagnosis is this only okay good Okay, how would you investigate this case now? Uh, as the part of triple investigation, I'll uh, uh, have examined the, uh, have completed the history and physical examination section. Then I'll go for uh, sonomammography uh, of this patient uh, to look uh, for whether there is uh, any, uh, whether the mass is malign, uh, having signs of malignancy or there any uh, lymph nodal involvement. Or also, there I will look for contralateral breast. uh and uh, after that i'll go for a core needle biopsy of the lump sir one so question to the expert from that uh, see nowadays what we have seen is students they uh, depend a lot on radio sonomammography what i want to ask that if there is a visible lump if is there is a palpable lump uh should we not go for a uh, uh, core biopsy or a fna rather than uh, uh, no. this uh, uh, radio no 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 doctor oh. purva it is mandatory yeah. that we do imaging before any uh, pathological diagnosis is asserted even okay. if there is a palpable mass the only situation where i would probably not go for a mammography is one the patient is so critically ill that i cannot shift her to a mammography suit and two it is a large fungating mass where a mammography is not being able to do the most important reason why you need to do a mammography even if there is a palpable mass is want to look for the rest of the breast and uh, you never know when a patient will come to you with a change in intent of treatment from a, a breast you know breast removing to a breast conserving and that is why you need to have your work up done before such a situation arises and Uh, the last but not the most least is whenever you do a core biopsy with the multiple cores that are harvested it is likely to cause a hematoma it is likely to cause localized small uh, hematomas which will then uh, confuse your mammography picture if you do it post biopsy okay so always right. a mammography and a ultrasound and always of both the breast the basis of mammography reporting is by comparison between the two breasts and that is why there is no role for a single breast mammography in uh, breast diagnosis yeah uh, i would like to add another reason particularly in this in this patient uh, being labc you are going to consider some sort of uh, prior treatment before attending yeah. surgery so it gives a yes. objective evidence for response assessment also so that is also very important yes. and right, the, uh, one more uh, re reason for doing a ultrasound uh, mandatorily especially in such a case you are seeing so much of podi or anj there is likely to be some amount of tissue edema so the exact dimensions of the tumor of what you palpated versus where actually the solid part of the tumor is may be confusing so many times you get a negative biopsy that is because you hit a necrotic portion and which is more common with larger tumors so always mandatory uh theoretically i agree that a mammogram is compulsory for the uh, students it is 100% correct to say a bilateral mammo sonogram should be done but uh, at tata memorial where resources are constrained in our country if eventually you are going to do a mastectomy on this side sometimes they prefer to do a, a mammogram only of the contralateral breast 
and save time and effort because ultimately uh, dr narendra and dr anaga you will agree that this patient is going to go for a mastectomy with so much body orange eventually probably so right sir maybe you could save resources and time by offering an only an ultrasound of this breast is my uh, submission but let us move ahead we will take up this issue later right sir actually yes a bilateral mammosonogram we will okay uh so risha you have the mammosome of this patient please put on the plates yeah uh, can you broadly describe what you are seeing uh so there are two view uh, craniocaudal and medial lateral view uh, in craniocaudal view uh, so there we can see uh, there is a, uh, a radio opacity Uh, having irregular border with speculated margin and uh, with multiple calcifications. Uh, along with that, we can see the. Uh, can you, can, uh, Rishav? Can you move your cursor? Yes, please. Uh, apart from that, we can see there were uh, axillary lymph node, uh, which is uh, having radio uh, radio opaque on mammography. So. Do they appear significant? How do you say they are significant or not? uh sir i uh, upon ug correlation i will look for uh, whether the uh, lymph node is uh, having rounded and uh, uh, with loss of fatty hilum uh, and uh, whether it is hypoechoic and with increased vascularity so these are signs of uh, signs of malignant yeah. lymph node one is size second thing is ratio between the cross section and minimum transverse diameter and longitudinal diameter and any irregularity vascularity and fatty hilum these are the things you look in ultrasound in mammogram also you have to look for the shape of the uh, node as well as size yes yeah so i mean what are the other things you look apart from that there is a mass there and apart from that what else you are interested in uh, sir i'll look for contralateral breast uh, breast and axilla uh, is there any other lump uh, or uh, Look for any occult masses that I have missed during my examination. Yeah, it may not be important in this patient. Even if lateral, any multi multi focality, multi sensitivity, you should look for. Yeah. Yes. Any micro calcifications that you would look for, or the density of the breast, Risha? So, Risha, in other point, what are the features that tend to uh, you to say that this might be malignancy? on mammography uh so first the malignant lump will be taller than wide and uh, there will be speculated margin with uh, uh, multiple flex of calcification uh with irregular uh, uh, ill defined uh, mem borders Shefali, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what else would you look for, Rishav? As I was saying, the micro calcs and how would how would you differentiate the uh, calcification which appear on the mammogram, whether it's benign or malignant? Suppose you see some calcification in the opposite uh, breast mammogram. Uh, ma'am, because uh, uh, there will be clustered calcification in benign swelling, uh, benign mass. uh but there will be stippled calcification case of malignancy there will be stippled calcification ma'am ah uh, visha whenever you are asked to describe a mammogram you have to again go uh, sorry i am a stickler for uh, sops and you have to go in a particular fashion so here when uh, narendra sir asked you to describe the mammogram you have to go very specifically you are seeing changes starting from the nipple to the uh, axilla you are seeing changes in the parenchyma in the skin all of that has to be included similarly when ma'am asked you how will you differentiate calcifications between benign and malignant what what character of the calcification what shape of the calcification uh, whether it is clustered or not clustered whether it is pleomorphic or monomorphic whether it is seen in one spot whether it is scattered individually all these points have to be mentioned okay ananda how would you here. describe this mammogram that will help the student uh, sir so i am I would, okay 
So if I have to describe this mammogram, I would say that this is a four film screening. So this is a diagnostic mammogram. Okay. So this is a four film diagnostic mammogram performed using two uh, view for each breast, a medial, a medial lateral oblique and a craniocaudal view. In this mammogram, I observe that the right breast uh, is, uh, looks, norm, uh, you know, looks normal and does not show any particular abnormalities, right? The other, uh, the opposite breast or the left breast, which is the uh, presenting breast, shows the changes of nipple retraction, the uh, thickening of the skin of the breast around the, skin the nipple and the areola and in the lower uh, quadrant. It also shows visible retraction of the nipple. There is a definite radio opaque, diffuse, irregular margined mass extending from the retroareolar uh, region up to the uh, pectoralis major muscle. Due to the rotation of the films, I cannot appreciate the retromammary space. That has to be mentioned. You cannot see retromammary space in either of the four films. So you should mention that. Along with those, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, I cannot appreciate microcalcification on this film. Yeah. If there is microcalcification, yeah. you should specify that I do see yeah. microcalcifications yeah. which are speckled, irregular, pleomorphic, scattered this, inside yeah. the tumor or outside the outside. tumor. Okay. So that is more important. You have to mention both and the extent of the microcalcifications. Then you come to the lymph nodes. I see lymph nodes along the pectoralis shadow. Most of the, all the lymph nodes are. Uh, uh, showing a fatty hilum. You can see the radiolucency in the center. So they are showing a radiolucency in the center, which shows a fatty hilum, except for one large uh, circular or oval lymph node, which does not demonstrate the fatty hilum and which is, uh, uh, which is also looking lobulated. So these complete your findings. Okay. And if you can see the inframammary uh, crease or the, uh, you know, at the lower end, you should comment on that. That is how I would describe this mammogram. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Vanaka. Rishav, yes. I, I hope you understood. Yes, sir. Okay. So describe uh, the I mammogram the... from the skin, nipple to the axilla, architectural distortion, mass, microcalcification, everything in order. So make a checklist. Make a checklist. Next, next. Sir, this is the end of my slide. Okay, so fine. Uh, we go to the gallery view. You can stop sharing the uh, screen. And we'll discuss what, what next we'll do and uh, how we'll manage this patient. Um, so can I interview you? Uh, go, uh, go. Yeah, please, please. please. Vishal, uh, what about the sonography of this uh, patient? Do you think uh, that was necessary uh, to do? And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'll uh, confirm the finding of uh, 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 mammography with the sonography finding. Like uh, is there, we can see that there are calcification in the right uh, right axilla. So we will confirm whether it is benign is or. Uh, information. What additional information would you have on the sonography? Uh, what about the axilla? <laughs> Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a node negative axilla. You see lymph nodes on the mammography. So, would your sonography help? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, In what way? And what will be the appearance on the sonography, if at all? I mean, sonography, I'll look for whether there is any uh, uh, lymph node. Uh, uh, seen which is hypoechoic uh, and having features of malignant uh, changes. The hilum? Uh, there will be a lot a loss of fatty hilum and increased vascularity. Uh, and um, uh, uh, the lymph node will be rounded. I think this was already discussed with Dr. Narendra. Examiners can we move on to the yeah. management? Oh, yeah. so I just want oh, to that, right. that the sonography should be combined with uh, mammography yeah. also yeah. because he just showed the yeah. mammography film, so it has yeah. to be combined. One, uh, one last point, I mean, think you can elaborate on that. So, do you know any scoring system or any grading system for this mammogram? Uh, sir, there is a bi-rate screen, uh, breast imaging, yeah. uh, reporting. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think PRM sir has joined. Good morning, sir. 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 Good
गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग पंकज भाई गुड मॉर्निंग सॉरी टू बी लेट आई एम सिटिंग इन वेरी नाइस प्लेस दिस इज एक्चुअल दिस इज नॉट ओनली मोर फन आई एम एट अंबा घाट वन ऑफ द प्लेस पिकनिक स्पॉट सॉरी टू बी लेट प्लीज कैरी ऑन कैरी ऑन ओके कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू रिशा सो ओके एनी मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस साइड और वी कैन जस्ट मूव टू द गैलरी वी कैन स्टॉप शेयरिंग द स्क्रीन आई थिंक So, Risha, would you like to uh, now give me a differential diagnosis again after you have given me the mammography findings? My differential would be, ma'am, uh, invasive ductal carcinoma. Uh, uh, sorry, ma'am, uh, invasive ductal or lobular carcinoma. Uh, any invasive carcinoma? Ah. Uh, Risha, madam is asking differential diagnosis. We accept that it is yours. invasive ductal carcinoma but what other things you will think of that's what she is asking uh so differential is 1 2 3 4 or you can say ma'am it uh, from everything it looks only there is no differential and there is only malignancy yes very well so yes, you told uh, us very well right that you described it so well that it would be a breast malignancy most likely to be invasive ductal or sarcoma or lymphoma or phylloidous now does that narrow down after you looked at the mammogram Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Uh, now it narrowed down to invasive. Uh, yes. So you uh, do be very confident. You are going well. Just give me the diagnosis of what you think is in your mind at this point of time. So it is a left-sided locally advanced breast malignancy without any evidence of any loco regional or distant metastasis. Most likely to be invasive ductal carcinoma, right? Yes. So that is how you say. It. Then go ahead. Management के बारे में बताइए. What are the other investigations you want? Anything else you want apart from coronal biopsy? Yeah, we'll go for. Why not FNAC? Uh, sir, because uh, in FNAC we cannot uh, differentiate between the ductal carcinoma in situ or invasive carcinoma. Apart from that, uh, uh, in coronal biopsy we can uh, uh, find out the histological grade, uh, ERPR status, or proliferative index. Uh, and as well as there will be less chances of false negative in case of coronal biopsy yeah all points are well taken yeah you go ahead with the coronal biopsy yes then vijay uh, can i can i interrupt for a minute yes yes sir uh, i would like to ask you people a question the because this is a very common problem we are daily facing so is it a necessary to do coronal biopsy in all patient when you, in whom in whom you suspect invasive ductal carcinoma or an fna should do uh, because this is the question commonly asked in general surgery ms exam that's why i am asking you yes sir so, no, the problem is sir dr like, vijay is not just sir taking yeah, the question narendra go ahead yeah, yes, narendra sir. go ahead please sir hello yeah it about maybe 10 years back people used to do fnac and all in the current scenario you need a more objective and more reliable investigation fnac which differentiate between invasive and uh, uh, in situ component definitely we would prefer a true cut need biopsy particularly in this case she is a lbc patient we may have to decide about her uh, neoadjuvant treatment and the drugs involved so we need a molecular profile also So in this particular patient, there is no question of doing a FNC biopsy is mandatory. And as an oncologist, we prefer coronal biopsy even in early breast cancer nowadays. There have been a lot of cases which uh, on FNC people have done mastectomy and they were landed up in court. Finally, it turned out to be something else. So a lot of problems are there. So we tend to avoid FNC in all cases. Anything you would like to add, Dr. Vijay? I, as oncologist uh, Pankaj Bai, I agree with Dr. Narendra that st the standard of care today would be uh, for palpable tumors a handheld ultrasound guided biopsy with a patient like this, lot of skin edema and ultrasound guided core biopsy. That is the standard of care. FNAC uh, false positives will be there, and in today's uh, evidence based uh, medicine, when we practice. i think better to do and, and uh, cytology needs a little more expertise also i think uh, interpreting cells whether they are malignant or not coronal biopsy even in i have seen in porbandar there are pathologists who do excellent you know true cut biopsy and diagnosis so more evidence based i sir so the so fnac is out 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 
for all practical purposes be, should it be done any, any indication of doing fnc that's what i'm asking probably to restart and all maybe people. axillary node we might consider an fnc axillary node whether it is positive or not fnc is all right but for diagnosis of the primary tumor core needle biopsy okay so that that is for all students the message should be loud and clear the fnc is out the reason what is the sir was asking rishav the false negative what is false negative what do you mean by false negative uh sir even the patient uh, is having uh, uh, breast malignancy even in that case the uh, uh, the biopsy or uh, fnc uh, it turned out to be negative even in case of positive what is the percentage sir i don't acha what is false positive uh so uh if we did negative on the first case uh, like uh, the patient is not having uh, breast malignancy but is still uh, it uh, shows that it is uh, positive on mammography or, or whatever or the investigation that i we are doing okay please carry on thank you so you already have to see it comes out as infiltrating the carcinoma yeah great uh, two yeah Okay, Rishav. Any other case? investigation you would go for? Sir, can I interrupt? Ah, uh, Rishav, can you briefly describe the technique of core needle biopsy? Ah, uh, sir, ah, uh, ma'am. Uh, first, I'll uh, take uh, consent from the patient, and then uh, I'll uh, make incision over the uh, breast, over the lump, uh, mostly over the circumareolar area, and uh, with the uh, biopsy uh, needle of size fourteen uh, gauge, I'll. Uh, I push the needle inside the tumor and I'll take punch from all the quadrant. And the direction of needle will be forty-five degree. Any local anesthesia to be given for that? Yes, it's, uh, we have to do it under local anesthesia. And would you do it blindly or uh, sonography guided, as Doctor Vijay was asking? Uh, was I mean, if the mass would be uh, palpable enough, so I can uh, go blindly. If it would uh, not be palpable, uh, so. Uh, or otherwise my ultrasonography guided the biopsy will be better ultrasound guided is always uh, better because in such a large mass there could be necrosis somewhere and you would uh, hit the wrong area and it would uh, give a false negative result uh, so rishi at this point i would like to point out that uh, yes you do it under local anesthesia with a written and informed consent however there is no role of doing it from a circum areolar uh, site the yeah. side to be taken or the direction to be taken is the shortest possible throw of the needle uh, yeah. without endangering uh, any nearby structures and without the uh, risk of uh, penetrating the uh, chest wall now uh, the angle has to be 45 or it has to be 90 or 60 it all depends upon how accessible you are to the uh, tumor and how comfortably you can position the needle without uh, going beyond the tumor okay so there is no role of taking it only circum areolar or taking it for core biopsy it should be the shortest possible uh, through anaka will you remove the biopsy site in case you are doing a breast conservation surgery do you need to excise the biopsy site uh, in case you do not a... it is not been it has not been shown to have a tumor okay. tract or biopsy tract seedlings are not known and secondly all breast conservative surgeries mandatorily go for uh, external beam radiotherapy which is also going to you know uh, theoretically cover that tract so there no, is no fear it. of seed, seeding the tract no. or the skin no. just because you are doing a large bore prucut biopsy no okay thank you no. and a 14 gauge needle is what is the largest bore available to us today and that is why we should do that but the ideal is a 11 gauge which is practiced in the western world which is not available in india so go ahead i think thank you bhavesh bhai bhavesh bhai has put up on the chat that the false negative chances are 36% and you don't look at micrometastasis if you are doing an fnc bhavesh bhai thank you okay apurva dr bhavesh bhai par pankaj bhai prashna pucha na etle eno jawab hovo joye chat ma <laughs> and this is, and i would also like to point out that this is under the ideal uh, circumstances yes right okay. go ahead right. sir 
So yeah, what is the what? biopsy report of this patient finally? IDC grade 2? It has not come yet. Sir. Well, you create a hypothetical report. Whatever is there in your mind. Give her a good prognosis. CRPR positive or two negative. <laughs> <laughs> Give her the benefit of doubt. Only in that case will she live with a large tumor which is 8 centimeters. Again, you only that probably explains the absence of lymph nodes. Correct. Yes. So, what other investigations would so, you like to do, Risha? On yeah. this? staging uh, workup. Uh, um, I'll go for uh, routine blood investigation in which I'll go for uh, liver function test and alkaline phosphatase. Apart from that, I look for uh, an evidence of malignancy. Uh, like we go for chest X-ray, ultrasonography of abdomen pelvis, uh, and uh, if there is uh, any bony tenderness or alkaline raised alkaline phosphatase, then I'll go for. Uh, uh, Was there any bony scan. tenderness? No, no, ma'am. In this patient, then why did you say if there is any bony tenderness? In your case, it wasn't, so you shouldn't. Yes. If they ask you in any case of breast cancer, say if there was. But if they ask you specifically for your patient, only commit to what your patient has. Okay. Yes. Mm. You are saying something? You are asking something? No, I was just saying of the investigation, rest of the investigation. Okay. Oh. Same, same. Right, right. Okay. No, why not take uh, PET CT? Nowadays, we have PET CT, no, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Risha, what is your take on this? Sorry, sir, I did not listen. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, did you not hear yeah. the question? Uh, no, uh, there was a connection Doc issue. No, no. My, Doctor, my question is, instead of doing yeah, multiple investigations, you can get on PET CT, no? Whole body imaging. Uh, yes. Why not? Will you get a PET CT scan done, Risha, for this patient is what the question is? Uh, no, I'm not in this patient uh, because patient is having only clinical signs of metastasis. So I'll go for less invasive uh, method like a sonogra ultrasonography. Okay. Yes, okay, Risha, would you advise your patient for MRI of breast or you won't advise your patient? Sir, in this because patient, what, we have been see what we have been seeing, the resident would... Uh, give a list of investigation to the patient to go get it done and patient would be ro roaming around with the MRI of a breast. Would you advise your patient or you won't advise your patient? In this patient, I will not advise for MRI breast. Why? Why, do you, why won't you advise for MRI breast? And why in other patients? Uh, uh, sir, because uh, in, with uh, this investigation, I can, uh, I can stage my... Uh, Diagnosis. So MRI, MRI helps MRI. in what? MRI, MRI helps, helps in, in diagnosis or it helps somewhere else? So, sir is asking mm -hmm. what are the indications of MRI in breast uh, diseases? When will you get the order in MRI breast to be done? Uh, when for diagnostic purpose, uh, if there is a, uh, any, uh, uh, we will differentiate it from scar recurrence. Uh, if there is any, uh, apart from, uh, uh, what, are any, you know, aspects, what are the three aspects of breast pathology that you will see on any breast imaging? You told us what you will see on ultrasound. You told us what you will see and what you saw on mammography. What in addition to these two will you see on an MRI breast? Ma'am, if there is any palpable actual lymph node without any, uh, meta, uh, without any mass, so I'll look for, go for MRI. So in or, this case, that is not there. You have yes. an unknown primary with axillary lymph node. You suspect it to be breast. There you will do MRI breast. Where it is. Next. In this case, why, why are you not doing MRI breast? What is the strength of MRI breast? What does MRI breast show you that your mammogram doesn't show you? That your ultrasound doesn't show you? In case of denser breast, uh, in this, uh, we cannot differentiate between the mass from the uh, breast tissue. We will go for MRI breast. Did you... oh, don't say such things. Young patient, dense breast with malignancy for evaluation, for breast conservation, for multicentric, multifocality, you may do a MR breast, 
don't say scar recurrence that is a failure of the surgery so that cannot be indication number 1 man we are not growing here. you are you are here. so uh, the indication of mri is not to detect uh, you know failure surgeons failures it is to help the patient so maybe that is one of the indications i know recurrence can be diagnosed on mri but keep it at the end make a checklist make a checklist is what i am keep repeating yeah common indications first so the, the the strength of the mri breast like dr dg very rightly told you is young breast dense breast this breast is not dense you can see it on the mammogram that it is category probably one density and you are very well seeing what is the opacity even if you suspect multifocality that is going to be answered with your mammogram even if you suspect later on recurrence like you are saying it can be seen okay so that is the reason why you will not do mri breast in this patient very limited indications for mri breast even in malignant breast most common young dense breast where you cannot assert a multifocality on your uh, ultrasound and your mammography and second retro areolar small masses ret- or the uh, posterior to the nipple such a big mass what else is mri going to tell okay. yes so one more thing and i would uh, like to add is uh, the bilaterality the thi- the histology the lobulars and the in situ yes. uh, carcinomas Yeah. and the hereditary uh, cancers when you are suspecting uh, yeah. the genetic history to be positive true screening screening in dense breast again yeah. if it is not and a dense breast you don't need it yeah. okay go ahead so these are all the indications of mri risha which you must note down if you are asked that question that uh, when will you get an mri done in breast because it's an expensive uh, investigation so you don't get it done in all the patients quick question to all the three four examiners shefali will you get a pet ct done yes no uh yeah to uh, just one yes, investigation no. yes i will get it a... anaga yes no no oh, i'm disappointed samir yes no pet scan pet scan no it's not available in our setup no 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 but that is not <laughs> <laughs> or will you get a ct scan thorax abdomen pelvis what is no. your no narendra pet scan metastatic workup for this patient narendra metastatic workup for this patient yeah i mean i would prefer a ct scan of the chest abdomen pelvis or pet ct either of the two i would go yeah, for yeah either of the two has to be done yeah okay so two out of four go for pet scan and probably two go for ct thorax abdomen and pelvis as part of a metastatic workup in a stage 3 uh, locally advanced mm-hmm. breast cancer because the likelihood of finding metastasis is quite high okay what will you do dg suppose oh suppose. i am the expert man <laughs> i ask questions <laughs> no you have to so the expert has to give the final opinion expert i would advice. probably go at the 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 current nccn recommendation is ct thorax abdomen pelvis having said that uh, a pet scan is more simpler because it does a, a whole body survey uh, the chances of false positives uh, mediastinal nodes etc are high but once you do a ct scan with a diagnostic ct a pet scan with a diagnostic ct it gives all the uh, you know required information about the proper staging i think in today's world a pet scan is uh an acceptable workup for staging breast cancer go ahead vijay sir can i make a comment vijay sir kinjal here yes sir yes sir yeah so so uh, biology is also very important you know uh, labc with the erp or negative or a triple negative disease you would definitely be tempted to go for a pet ct scan uh maybe if it was a erp or positive her to negative kind of a case uh poorly skin involvement no axilla seen you may go ahead with ct thorax and ct abdomen so a biology can also help us guiding whether we go for a pet ct or a ct only yes very true kinjal we had accepted it would be idc grade 2 and erp had strongly positive as per dg's <laughs> microscopic review uh, so yeah, we, we continue with that diagnosis continue. but rishav so we, we uh, I, let me that. interrupt here rishav you yes. have to uh, stick to what are the guidelines in your answers in the exam these discussions are beyond those discussions but in the exam when you are asked you have to say that the guidelines recommend this is this and that is why that would be my first choice however 
if the examiner insists, will you, if you have PET CT scan, will you do? Yes, sir. If I have the availability and the patient is willing, uh, I would still do a PET CT scan. Okay. Suppose you can tell me that this is our institutional practice. Go yes. ahead. How will you manage this patient? Suppose, suppose this patient having a high serum alkaline phosphatase. Yes. Then again, there is an indication that asymptomatic bone mats again is very common in locally advanced breast cancer. Correct. Rishav, how will you manage this patient? What is the treatment? Oh. Come to the treatment. Uh, this is a Rishav, you have the patient and you and histology as per Dr. D.G. Vijay has said. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, uh, as, the, as this is locally advanced tumor, I'll go for new adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, after that, uh, I will uh, check for the pathological uh, complete uh, clinical or pathological response and then we'll go for uh, modified radical uh, mastectomy. Uh, after that, I'll go for uh, radiotherapy. Uh, and, oh, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. We, you start with new adjuvant. See, we have Bhavesh by waiting for this moment. <laughs> what will you give? In new adjuvant. Bhavesh by has jumped in right at the perfect moment. Bhavesh yeah. has been quiet for a long time. So go ahead, Bhavesh. <laughs> He's busy in the chat. I'll, <laughs> sir, I'll give uh, anthracycline and cyclophosphamide. Uh, four cycle of anthracycline cyclophosphamide for, uh, followed by taxin, taxin, uh, every three weekly uh, or four cycle. Uh, and then we'll check for uh, uh, response of this patient. If uh, Bavis, you want to say anything, important, Bavis, importance here again is the ERPR and HER2 new status. This is very important as again Dr. Kinjal Jani also mentioned if it is HER2 positive and we are looking uh, LABC, locally advanced. Then again, there is a role of anti-HER2 agent. Is, as you rightly told, Risho, you are absolutely right. This is as a good prognostic like ERPR positive and HER2 negative. But look to the other part also. If it is ERPR negative or ERPR positive with HER2 positive, triple positive. Then again, the addition of the anti-HER2, that is transtuzumab, that is with the paclitaxel. So your standard might be this anthracycline plus cyclophosphamide that is four cycles, that is three weekly. Again, there is a role of some dose dense protocol also. And again, in this particular, you had mentioned diabetes and hypertension, that is your comorbid illness. So you have to require 2D eco baseline. Your cardiac status is also important. Might be in spite of adriamycin or anthracycline, you can use epirubicin, that is more cardioprotective. So yes. that also one of the option. So your selection of chemotherapy agent as a new adjuvant chemotherapy is depend on the ERPR status, HER2 new status, the age of the patient and the comorbid illness of the patient. Excellent, excellent. So in this case, you would give epirubicin with cyclophosphamide Probably two or three weekly, followed yes. by paclitaxel yes. weekly, two weekly, or three weekly, depending upon the tolerance of the patient. So let's have a one conclusion that I will go in this particular patient with four EC three weekly, followed okay. by paclitaxel single agent three weekly. That is a standard protocol. If there is some deviation that is depend on the ERPR and HER2 new status as well as other modules. ERPR positive word. Okay. Examiners, next question. Yeah, yeah uh, Rishav. Yes, sir. Uh, what, is the, what do you think? What is the response rate in a hormone receptor positive tumor to chemotherapy? Uh, sir, in case of uh, uh, triple negative, and uh, HER2 positive uh, tumor, there will be uh, uh, approximately 80 to 90% pathological complete response. But in case of ER positive, there is less uh, chances of uh, pathological response. Uh, so talking of pathological, 80 to 90% we have not yet achieved. Maximum would be 60 to 70%, which you seen HER2 positive with dual HER2 targeting, new adjuvant HER2 targeting. But otherwise, in such a ER PR hormone receptor positive, what is the other partial response rate? What is the pathological complete response rate? Any idea? Is it less or more? So, uh, sir, in ERPR positive, it will be less uh, response. 
so any alternative treatment available neoadjuvant uh what are the drawbacks what are the uh, we can go for uh, cmf uh, regimen sir cyclophosphamide methotrexate and cyclohydrocel as well as uh, or uh, in case of hormone positive, uh, positive we can uh, think of uh, we can uh, add uh, hormonal therapy as a new adjuvant okay yeah new adjuvant hormonal is one option but what are the drawbacks i mean how long it takes for response again my answer for the new adjuvant hormonal therapy if this particular patient rather than 58 if it is 75 if it is 82 generally the dictum or the guideline is that beyond 70 years again there was not clear cut age guidelines but beyond 70 years of the age generally we are try to avoid the chemotherapy looking to the side effect or the toxicity of the chemotherapy and especially very when we believe a clinical oncologist believe it is a low grade or a good biology erpr positive and her2 negative where i will take a new adjuvant hormonal therapy and then SOS surgery. Rishav, yes. I think the most important thing, uh, whether the patient achieves pathological complete response uh, or not, I mean that is very important. But even then, for us, this is initially inoperable disease. It is to convert inoperable disease to operable breast cancer that we are giving new adjuvant chemo. Yes. for that the skin edema has to uh, reduce substantially the size of the tumor has to shrink you can't go around operating 8 cm tumors and the size uh, the lymph nodes are negative in this case but skin edema has to go down size of the tumor has to go down and then you will plan for the surgery yes what surgery will you plan and uh, when will you plan the surgery i may add on to dg's question would you like to plan uh, after completion in between of the chemotherapy if there is some response uh ma'am uh, we, we can plan in between and complete the rest of the cycle afterward or uh, we can complete our cycle and then uh, plan for what MRI. will you do sir i will complete all chemotherapy cycles and then plan for that is the correct yeah. answer that complete correct all answer. cycles of yeah. chemo that is what dr shefali was saying trying to tell which therapy is uh, no more practiced most of the time it's the completion of comp- a new adjuvant and then operate what is the surgery that you will do modified radical mastectomy i'll go for tell us six seven important steps how will you do a mastectomy forget the painting draping put the incision Niji, uh, can I ask a question before yeah, we yeah, answer? Yeah, you are the you are the examiner, madam. <laughs> <laughs> And how will you decide what kind of surgery uh, will, uh, you will do in this patient? Whether you are going for conservation or mastectomy? Um, yeah, for breast conservation surgery, if uh, I we can achieve the adequate margin with uh, prop uh, with uh, cosmesis with proper cosmesis. Oh, so, will you investigate before uh, the surgery? Will you like to do any reinvestigation before you plan the surgery? Yes, ma'am. Before planning surgery, I'll again go for uh, sonomammography. Or if I have done the MRI uh, breast at the first, place, then I'll repeat the MRI breast again. Uh, and also will uh, uh, and also uh, will take sentinel lymph node biopsy. So to answer the question which I asked was that a clinical examination. and a sonography should be good enough uh, correct me if i'm wrong dg and anaga or if there are any additions so before deciding whether she is going for breast conservation or for mastectomy you need your clinical examination and a sonography you can't keep on repeating mammography or an mri uh, unless it is absolutely a must the only role for repeating a mammography or a and or a mri is one if the mri was the basis of uh, identifying the tumor and its multifocality which were not seen on a ultrasound or a, a mammo and Correct. second if there is extensive microcalcification which is only seen on a mammo so those are the only two places where you will do a mammography and or a mri otherwise just ultrasound is good enough so now you can move ahead with the steps of surgery yeah Uh, i'll place modified stewart uh, elliptical incision over the breast and try uh, including the nipple areola complex and uh, uh, 
skin uh, approx 1 to 2 cm skin uh, overlying the uh, tumor and then we will raise the flap of uh, 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 skin and uh, try to dissect up to the clavicle superiorly and on the medial border of sternum medially and anterior border of latissimus dorsi laterally and 2 to 3 cm uh, uh, down from the inframammillary fold and uh, uh, and then i'll uh, <clears throat> And then I will dissect the breast tissue from uh, with pectoralis thysia uh, over the pectoralis major muscle, and then we'll go for axillary lymph node dissection, in which uh, I will dissect uh, I will dissect the uh, level one and level two lymph node with preservation of thoraco uh, 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 with uh, preservation of medial and lateral pectoral nerve uh, uh, yeah, nerve of bell uh, as well as uh, thoraco uh, dorsal. Uh, um, now to serratus anterior and now to latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. dorsi. Yes. Forget what their names are. Huh? So what are the levels of node you are querying? Uh, level 1 and level 2, sir. In the N0, you said, but you said the sentinel node also. No? What is the current standard of care? You also mentioned something about sentinel node. Right? Yes, sir. So in a new joint, Scenario, I mean, in a LABC, locally advanced breast cancer, what's your take of sentinel node biopsy? I'll, uh, after uh, <laughs> I'll go for sentinel lymph node biopsy and then uh, check whether it's node positive or uh, negative. And then we'll go for it. Sir, before that, how do you do a sentinel node biopsy or how do you track the sentinel node? We have experts in the panel, so I would you should always ask. You should tell and ask what is the ideal. Do you have anything? Uh, sir, uh, we will inject the uh, uh, dye like methylene blue or uh, uh, some colloid or technetium 99 uh, around the peritumoral or the periareolar area. And uh, then uh, and then we will look for uh, uh, sentinel lymph node with gamma pro. Uh, <clears throat> See, yes. you are mixing up two things. Inject blue dye, look for a blue node in the axilla. Yes. Inject a radioactive dye and use a gamma probe to detect a hot node in the axilla. Yes. Or use a ICG dye and pick up a fluorescent lymph node in the axilla. Yes. So there are three ways of doing it. Meth yes. blue, methylene blue, uh, radioactive dye, technetium albumin colloid or ICG dye. So, and so detection. Is there any difference, Vijay? No, now, as of now, there is not much difference between. So, whatever you are comfortable with, you can go ahead according to your own institutional protocol. If you use dual method, one plus one, then the chances of false negative are uh, less. The chances of missing right. the nodes is less. But there are people who say that using ICG dye is probably now becoming more and more gradually yeah. popular. Otherwise, common is use methylene blue cost-effective method of doing sentinel lymph node biopsy. Yeah, it is It is pretty much effective and uh, the, uh, our pathologists are good enough to report them quite correctly. Right, ma'am. Okay, there is one question for the experts. Uh, in this case, do we go for a sentinel lymph node biopsy? With the tumor size 8 by 8 centimeter <laughs> with the PD orange. Anaga. DG, it is for the expert. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a a trap. Since Vijay asked me, since Vijay asked me before before he answers it, uh, let me make two things very clear over here. One was the centennial node biopsy at the time of surgery in a LAB. Now there are trials and there are, uh, you know, there are ongoing trials and there are some published trials which do say that there is a role for a sentinel node biopsy in a locally advanced breast cancer post NSCT and after which uh, we can or we cannot skip. The present day protocol in India still is they do, uh, we do a sentinel node biopsy, whoever is practicing it, but I am yet to come across a group who says that if the sentinel node is negative, we do nothing else. Most of them... Uh, do go ahead and do a lower axillary sampling or at least a 
level one and two dissection. Now here more important is and which I want to be addressed is that the lymph node pathology should have been documented before the NSCT started. Yes. So if there was any suspicious lymph node, we should biopsy or FNAC it now. But in this it case, was negative on clinical and ultrasound examination. It should have. It should be looked into detail, and we should identify whether it was so there or not. The pet not. scan also plays because a role. That in that is, <clears throat> yeah. If there's any suspicion, it should be biopsied. I'm not specifically talking yeah. about this case, but if there is any suspicion, even there is small uptake, it should be biopsied because then that will guide you towards your post-operative uh, uh, care also. And otherwise, definitely there is a role, and there is an increasing role of doing a sentinel node biopsy. Uh, in locally advanced uh, breast cancers post NSCT. Because uh, remember the PCR, we will come to it, we will ask you that. Uh, but uh, let me put my foot, you know, uh, foot into my mouth and say it here itself. So when we talk about PCR, it's not just a breast PCR, but the breast and the axilla PCR. So that is why it is mandatory to see the lymph nodes, but at the same time, it is also now more uh, pertinent that we start saving the axilla to reduce the uh, morbidity associated with axillary dissection. So, yes, DG, the expert view. So I think um, either the mammosoma was showing lymphadenopathy. So we should the time that... in a large tumor, it could be reactive lymphadenopathy very often in our country because of the heat and the armpit hair and other things. Lymph nodes are there, but most of the time, hand infection, she comes from a lower socioeconomic status. She could be doing manual labor, you know, that is why the lymph right, nodes sir. are enlarged, but they are not metastatic. That could be one reason. Coming to Dr. Samir, my dear friend from Bhavnagar, your question whether the lymph sentinel lymph node biopsy can be done. Theoretically, it can be done if you have the skills. However, it is a more complex procedure to do a sentinel lymph node biopsy in a locally advanced post-NACT patient than Prima. So you have early breast cancer, sentinel node, very easy. LABC, sentinel, more complicated. So probably what the young candidate said that he would do a sentinel node is theoretically correct. Otherwise, because again, I only said that the chances of metastatic disease is higher. In a similar way, the chances of metastatic lymph nodes are also higher, even if the nodes were negative on ultrasound. It may be for an examiner and a postgraduate level exam, it is not incorrect to say that I will do a level one, level two, but the standard of care as an oncologist, we would recommend sentinel lymph node biopsy. As the postgraduate level, not to miss any lymph node, to do a Thorough level one, level two lymph node dissection is also not a wrong thing. That is my final take on this. Now you have done the surgery. You have sent the specimen for histopathology. The biopsy report comes as there is residual disease in the primary, in the breast. And however, whether you have done level one, level two node dissection or a sentinel nodes, the nodes are negative. So what is the adjuvant treatment now? Uh, sir, I'll go for radiotherapy in this patient. After wound healing? Yes, sir, after wound healing. Dr. Kinjal Jani, what is your question on the post-operative radiotherapy that this, this patient specifically requires? Yeah, so I, I would just like to ask uh, <clears throat> if the, if he knows about uh, when do you think about radiotherapy? So forget about the LABC part and the uh, this patient who received a new adjunct chemotherapy, but which are the patients which you directly operated? You have done an MRM directly and then you know advice. What are the indications for post What are the indications for radiotherapy? Uh, so if there is four or more not positive, along with that, any stage three cancer, I'll go for radiotherapy. In the stage two cancer. Uh, uh, I'll look for whether what are the histological grade uh, of this patient. If there is high histological grade, uh, uh, even in one, two, three, uh, three node positive, I will go for radiotherapy. Very good. So, yeah, so this is uh, what was there in the old guidelines that if the four or more nodes are positive, you go for adjuvant radiotherapy post mastectomy. So, now what do we follow? We follow that uh, any tumor which is more than five centimeters, so whatever which is beyond T2 lesion. So, if it's a T3 lesion, or uh, having skin involvement, which is a T4 lesion, or involvement of muscles, uh, you go for adjuvant radiotherapy. Or if there are nodes positive, you go for adjuvant radiotherapy post mastectomy. And uh, 
uh, like we are we are not too much bothered about the grading part but a note positive is an indication for adjuvant radiotherapy in the recent times i'm talking about the last 10 years before that it was more than four nodes and uh, any bcs any breast conservative surgery is itself a indication for adjuvant radiotherapy <laughs> so any t3 t4 tumor node positive patient is an indication for and breast conservation surgery t3 t4 node positive bcs so these are the common indications for post op rt correct kinjal yes sir correct okay so uh dr vijay is already there rishav what is uh, what are the indications of bcs or what are the contraindications for a breast conservation uh, so uh, the contraindications are uh, uh, if there is a multicentric multifocal tumor or the uh, tumor size and the breast volume uh, ratio is more uh, and we cannot achieve the uh, if the margins uh, and we cannot achieve the proper cosmesis even after uh, dissecting the tumor uh, with adequate margin or uh, uh, patient is having contraindications uh, in or even in case of uh, intermetry breast carcinoma and also where uh, the radiotherapy are contraindicated we will not go for breast conservation surgery like uh, uh, absolute contraindication are uh, pregnancy apart from that uh, if the patient is having uh, 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 etm or p53 mutations or prior radiotherapy history in last 10 to 30 uh, years uh, of age uh, along with that uh, patient is having uh, severe pulmonary uh, disease or uh, cardiac disease the uh, one primary uh, contraindication see... for breast conservation is extensive microcalcification yes diffuse aspect. that is the Micro. first diffuse appearing microcalcification you never do brcs for multifocal multicentric it is not a absolute contraindication i would put it today for a post graduate as a relative contraindication the rest are also all relative contraindications but i think it is you answered the question well and inappropriate tumor to breast ratio so if there is inappropriate tumor to breast ratio what are your options patient still wants breast conservation surgery कुछ भी करो यू हाउ विल यू वॉट विल यू डू इन दैट केस ट्यूमर इज लिटिल लार्ज ब्रेस्ट इज लिटिल स्मॉल सर आई गो फॉर न्यू एडजुमेंट कीमोथेरापी और वी कैन रिसेक्ट द ट्यूमर एंड गो फॉर अंको प्लास्टिक सर्जरी ब्रिलियंट आंसर ब्रिलियंट आई होप इन यूर पी जी एग्जाम यू गेट अ सी ए ब्रेस्ट केस यू विल सर्टनली पास यू विल गेट अ रैंक एंड प्रे फॉर डॉक्टर विजय टू कम टू बी योर एग्जाम <laughs> so 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 what should be the protocol uh, considered for bcs rishav the question yes. is for you and then you'll get a good answer from uh, our experts uh, sir bcs also uh, uh, first the tumor size is less compared to breast uh, breast volume as well as uh, i will also discuss uh, with multidisciplinary team as well as patient Uh, about the local regional uh, recurrence as well as she uh, has to adhere with the follow up uh, for radiotherapy uh, and the tumor size is uh, uh, and uh, yes so supposing the same patient i mean say a young for 30 year old patient with a t2 uh, or t2 maybe uh sir, sir what is the take on uh, lymphadenopathy when we are talking of a small tumor is a large tumor with no lymph nodes but what routinely we see a 2 or 3 cm uh, a mass with uh, a large number of positive nodes if we are talking of breast conservation and anaga you uh, shefali want to take this one quickly we are running out of time <laughs> Uh, so small tumors with, uh, with the large uh, okay. small tumor big nodes, nodes. whether bcs small can be done or not nodes, small tumor big nodes will definitely point towards the aggressive disease and that would be seen on my core biopsy and isc i would be opting for nsct a large disease in the axilla is not a contraindication to breast right, conservative right, surgery right. because good. your axillary address is irrespective of your breast address 
Yeah, so Neo Exio will so, uh, so, give so a response we... to the axillary lymph nodes, and then uh, you can go ahead with uh, breast conservation. So the axillary lymph nodes will be taken care of by the chemotherapy part. Yeah. NAC, yeah. Uh, okay. NACT and your surgical management. That is irrespective of what you do in the breast. Okay. Okay. Just clip the node before starting new adjuvant chemotherapy. Dr. Risha, don't you know go into great. I mean, discuss with it. Recurrence is not very common after breast conservation surgery, as it is made out to be. The rates are really very very low. Like you do not discuss recurrence after doing a major hernia. Or a laparoscopic <laughs> at civil hospital. We also don't discuss recur. Sir, recurrence is again a failure. Highlight what is positive about breast conservation surgery. Highlight what is you know the patient in spite of having an early breast cancer or a locally advanced breast cancer, there is a huge psychological advantage to the life uh, of the patient by doing a breast conservation surgery. Emphasize the positive aspects of BCS. There is no difference in overall survival, disease-free survival, practically, whether you do a BCS or a mastectomy. And the difference in local regional recurrences is very, very small. Don't put the focus on that. Emphasize the positive aspects. Breast conservation is standard of therapy for early breast cancer. Also, standard of care in many patients of locally advanced breast cancer. So, sir, what is the role of radiotherapy and chemotherapy as far as see? There is definite difference in uh, what we do in MRM and what we do in BCS. So, what will be the role of radiotherapy in BCS? Prevent local regional recurrence. Right. So, all patients of BCS should undergo. Absolute. Uh, almost absolute. all. Almost all. Right. Elderly patients, hormone receptive, small tumor, not do not give radiation. But right. uh, Kinjal. Yes, sir. So the question is uh, where yeah. Yeah. you so, will not so, yeah, give yeah. radiation. So, yeah, so we so we usually give. So BCS itself is an indication for radiotherapy. So now Correct. you know when you do a BCS, you are worried about the some some disease in the rest of the breast. So that is the reason. We add radiotherapy for all BCS patients, but as rightly said by Vijay sir, there are few uh, few places where you can avoid. I, I mean, you you should not be avoiding, but you can avoid. Is an elderly patient who has a lot of comorbidities like a cardiac disease, a pulmonary function is compromised, and is a very strong ERPR positive patient who is very likely to live a, a you know a good life and has a less chance of recurrence. Uh, in such cases, you can omit radiotherapy. See the the thing is, if you omit radiotherapy for breast. There are chances that the patient might fail locally, and you still have the option of doing a mastectomy at that place of time. So, for an elderly patient with a good biology, you can omit radiotherapy. But yeah, usually BCS, you have to give radiotherapy. That's a thumb rule. Right. Uh, Ajay, Bhavad, 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 can I? Uh, so we we um, yes uh, yes surgical resident, and we discussed a lot about chemo and radiation, which Risha has answered very well. But uh, can we also discuss about the surgical aspect? Uh, we were uh, talking about mastectomy. So, what yeah, are yeah. the complications uh, uh, of the surgery? What precautions will you take? And what about the drains? We never discussed the drains. So, Rishav, any uh, what, what kind? Uh, would you like to put drains? And uh, what kind of drains? And how do you uh, take up take post-operative care of this patient once mastectomy okay. is done? Yes, sir. What are the common complications of mastectomy, in short? Yes, correct. Uh, seroma formation, uh, then wound in Saxon, uh, or there can be numbness uh, in the upper arm uh, if we have resected level 3 lymph node or uh, uh, resected uh, costobrachial nerve. Uh, apart from uh, that, uh, there can be hematoma formation. Obese patient diabetic patient post nact flap necrosis flap most necrosis. common yes obese patient post nact high bmi flap necrosis is really you know one not common but you have to be careful about that yes uh, rishab what is the no, correct no, status about rishab dr narendra what, what do you want to say narendra no what is the current status about margins in breast cancer how much margin you want uh, sir, no ink on tumor uh, is the current uh, guideline. Yeah. 
but in surgery you you look for a 1 cm margin of course but finally in histopathology you would yeah more during knowing. surgery a 1 cm gross margin risha what about the drains ma'am i like to put the drain uh, in the patient so, so what drain what drain where uh, drain there ma'am negative uh, suction drain one in the axilla uh, and another uh, below the skin flap uh, i like to put and we will check for the uh, 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 amount to drain if it is less than uh, uh, 20 cc uh, in third or fourth uh, in fourth or fifth post uh, post operative day uh, i'll consider for uh, uh, removing the drain apart from that uh, uh, i will uh, start the passive physiotherapy of the limb from the day one itself um, and then we'll go for uh, 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 shoulder movement uh, exercises So how will you prevent limb edema uh, ma'am during surgery uh, we can go for uh, uh, we can avoid the liver, uh, we can uh, do a tissue handling better uh, as well as use of electro cautery uh, cautery or diathermy uh, and uh, uh, avoid bipolar cautery bipolar cautery yes yeah. okay na uh, and in the post operative period i'll uh, uh, i'll give a feature Therapy to the patient, like a smiley ball or passive, active yeah. or passive. Prevention, prevention is the uh, best thing. Yes, because yes. treatment of limb edema is a little difficult. Most of the time. Yeah. So in this patient, what do you have completed? Chemotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy. Anything else you want to do? I'll go. Uh, I'll follow up the patient. Uh, No, no. She is a ear PR possible lady, no. Hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy, I will go for. Uh, How long? Sir, what agent? Uh, in uh, premenopausal patient, I will go for tamoxifen, uh, and for five years, and uh, 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 and in postmenopausal aromatase in, uh, inhibitor, like an estrogen or electrogen. Uh, and if the patient is pre, uh, if the if we have started uh, tamoxifen. And patient is uh, uh, for five year, and the patient is still pre-menopausal. Then we will continue the tamoxifen for another five year. If the patient is uh, uh, post-menopausal, then we, uh, then we can go for tamoxifen or uh, aromatase inhibitor for another five year to complete total ten year period. What is the one main side effect of aromatase inhibitor? One side effect. The decrease bone mass density. Yes. So you should do a. Uh, bone density test before you start for a post menopausal lady. Yes, good. And always give the cell cal or calcium tablet supplement with letrozol. Yes, please co-prescribe calcium supplement and always do yearly mammogram. There is also role of adjuvant bisphosphonate. Yes, that is jolantronic acid also in such type of breast cancer patients who are on AI. The side, commonest side effect of the tamoxifen, uh, sir, hot flushes or uh, uh, vaginal dryness. Apart from that, uh, uterine uh, uh, cancer as well as uh, embolic event, thromboembolic events. So again, whenever patient having a history of thromboembolism or CV stroke in the past, then please try to avoid tamoxifen. and what will be your post uh, um, with the follow up protocol for this patient once all the treatment is completed uh ma'am as the patient is on uh, tamoxifen uh, or hormonal therapy for 10 years then uh, we will look for side effect and as well as uh, yearly mammography uh, with clinical examination uh, will do and if there is uh, any uh, symptoms of uh, metastasis like uh, a bone pain or uh, Cough. Then I'll go for metastatic workup also. Good. Yeah. Anything remaining? Samir Bai. Uh, Rishab, uh, yes. one thing in operation means how would you send the specimen to the pathologist? Uh, so I'll Very mark important. all all the sites of the tumor along with the uh, marking of uh, axillary tail. uh and we will send it uh, in formal and uh, also we will uh, uh mark the different level of uh, lymph node separately 
and send it to pathologist okay. so try and preserve the anatomy of the specimen as in when possible so that the pathologist can mark it properly for you when do you call something as inadequate axillary staging basically how many nodes you want to have in a mastectomy specimen a uh, 10 uh, nodes minimum to be removed to call it a day Yeah, one of the I mean criteria for radiation could be inadequate uh, removal of the nodes also, particularly in a node positive. Right, sir. Suppose you had done in this case bone scan or PET scan, yes. as Dr. D G Vijay also tell in a higher center or metro, and you found a single bone mats, bone mats, single bone mats. What is what do you mean by oligometastasis? and whether your intention will be palliative or still curative uh so my intention would be still curative uh, so suppose uh, there is a oligomat so the single bond mats and patient received new adjuvant chemotherapy and after eight cycles of new adjuvant chemotherapy your pet scan is again so no metabolic uptake in that bond mats Yes. Are you going for MRM? Uh, yes, sir, I'll go for MRM. And for that adjuvant radiation therapy in a locally advanced with oligometastasis, suppose there is a you can or you can talk with your radiotherapist that you can also give additional radiation to that local part also. Yes. And you can add also in that new adjuvant chemotherapy also. a bis phosphonide that is dolendronic acid yes any role of single liver mats any role of metastatectomy uh yes sir in metastatic cancer we uh, go for toilet mastectomy uh, and uh, treat the symptom of the patient as well as give palliative care uh, with uh, chemotherapy or hormone therapies Nisha, what uh, uh, Doctor Bhavesh Bhai is talking about is, you know, uh, he is talking about this oligometastatic. Uh, now this is something which is uh, coming up in a big way because uh, breast is comparatively doing good because we have lot of chemotherapeutic op options to give to the patient. So this patient, even in a metastatic condition, tend to do much better than a patient of say lung or a pancreas. So in breast and and a few other sites like prostate and uh, rectum. For yes. a oligometastatic condition, when there are uh, around three to five metastases, less than less than five metastases, we yes, consider them as right. oligometastatic. And our intention is to try to achieve cure for this patient. So in this patient, we would go for the standard of care treatment along with the metastatic coming. So suppose if there is a small liver lesion uh, along with the breast lump, you go for a new adjuvant chemotherapy, follow it up with your surgery, which is planned for the breast and the adjuvant radiotherapy. and for the liver lesion you have two options you know you can go for a metastatectomy if it is remaining or you can do a radio surgery we can do a surgery with radiation which is called a sbrt so so a patient with a oligometastatic condition we still aim to cure this patient so this is something which is new coming up in last few years for for a few selected sites and breast is one of them so for the benefit of the pgs uh, oligometastatic disease like i'll just summarize it what dr kinjal has said in, in uh, relation to breast cancer Uh, less than five sites are considered to be oligometastatic, but whether you will treat them with curative intent or not will become clear once you complete the NACT and see how the response has been. If the response to your neoadjuvant chemotherapy has been good, with a, a probable PCR at the primary and all secondary sites. So the definition where you will de definitely consider this curable is that. you should see pcr at all probable pcr it will only be documented on pathology but cr uh, response at all pathological sites including all the metastatic sites and your curative intent will only be complete when you address all those sites also so if it is liver the liver site metastatectomy if it is bone then what do you do for bone say for example like dr kinjal said just as brt would be sufficient to say i have offered curative treatment for a Uh, bone lesion. Okay, so that is what he was asking. 
I think Rishav has answered all the questions very well. Uh, you are very well prepared, Rishav. You have answered all the experts and examiners and all the uh, other uh, uh, teachers who are there. So all the very best to you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes. Very well. Doctor Vijay. All for... Sir, anything remaining? Doctor Digi Vijay. Doctor Hulikal. Yeah, I think we have covered almost all everything. I think it's done very well. Yeah, thank you, thank you, right. Okay, so should we call it a day then? Yeah. Right, thank sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, experts. Thank you. Uh, as the president of ABSI and the ABSICON, yeah, as the president of ABSI, which is the Association of Breast Surgeons of India. Yes, sir. I request all students to become the members. And ABSI, and uh, help us in organizing this next year. Definitely, that will be great. Kapoor uh, Bhai and Pankaj Bhai, I congratulate you also for having such uh, nice students. Very well prepared. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The students are there. Especially, I, I am thankful to everybody who has cooperated. Ma'am, you, Anga, Dr. Digi Vijay, Dr. Nandra Halikal, Dr. Bhavesh Bhai, and Dr. Kinjal Jani. Dr. Samir Bhai from Bhavnagar Medical College. Thank you, ma'am. We'll be leaving them. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Really well, and it also learning for us also. Perfect. Yes, sir. Good day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good day.